But okay, let's move on. Well, are you finished with that song? Did you have anything else? Uh, to yeah, say? yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just basically, you know, wanted to see that to and, and caption the whole like uh, perspective of a dollar bill or uh, a hundred dollar bill and that journey and how it led to the individual artist itself, which was basically one of those things that you, it was a clever way to uh, put his name out there. Yeah. If you think about sure. it. For sure. Especially with the whole police call at the end, being like, hey, yeah. Jordan Lucas, like said his whole name, you know? Yeah, so we know more about you than you may think. And if you don't cooperate, you know, cooperatively, uh, we're gonna have to. It's, you, you do, it's the easy way you can do it the hallway. So that's basically You're right. Um, so now let's move on to song number two on your list is "Thugging in My Yesterdays" by Problem. Now, again, it's a song that I've never heard, but immediately, and you told me this earlier that you were comparing it to "Bedtime Story" by Slick Rick. When I, yes, when I literally. I don't know if you've ever heard the start. And the finish of a uh, yeah, of course I have. I've heard a million. Of, I know. Uh, yeah, absolutely. It's that. Uh, it's that. Um, this is how we do it. It's that instrumental. Share <laughs> mm-hmm. music. I don't know who was first. I'm pretty sure uh, this is how we do it was first, but I don't know. That's not important though. But uh, yes, I've heard the song. I've heard the beginning. I've heard the end. Um, and All this right, song so starts off very similarly in the beginning. Exactly. Um, but I had the first verse here, uh, and it, it does not go the way that that song goes. So uh, that song starts off once upon a time not long ago. This nigga came in last night, was turned, fell asleep at this bitch house, woke up, still drunk, baby crying, my dick's out. Jesus Christ. <laughs> this is my, and excuse my reaction, this is my very first time reading this. Okay, so. Last night was turf, fell asleep at this bitch house, woke up, still drunk, baby crying, my dick's out, grabbed a bar of soap, underarms, then I hit the, oh my God. Then I hit the balls, charge up my yeah, phone, you know, grab my keys, then I hit the yard. What that's, now? That's I'm what the in my yesterdays. New money, same clothes. Oh God. <laughs> but you gotta think about it like this, you know, it, it's just like what? if you went to I'm a- sorry. I'm sorry, go ahead. If you would've went to a party, you know, you ended up going home with this person, okay. and you know, you don't really know their whole life outside of the club. You just know, you know, trying to get your your lustful pleasures out of the way. You know, you're just trying to do your normal thing. So, you know, he did a little bird bath. You know, he tried to at least keep the odor down. Oh, wow. You know, he he uh, got the bar soap cleaned up on his arms, his groin. You know, trying to. Trying to at least alleviate the funk. Maybe you know, you still I'm have sorry, that drunk person. Maybe friend. it's because I'm a female. I would have just went home and took a shower. Like I would have just put my shit back on, and then went home, took a shower, changed clothes, and then got my day started. Like I wouldn't have just. Oh, let me scrub down real quick. No, because you gotta. Put but you gotta think of it. You have to think of it in a man's perspective. If you have stuff to do. Yeah, you might have to do a little bird bath so you can knock the odor down. I'm not knocking you for that. I'm not knocking you for that because that's fair. You know, you got you, time is money. You killing daylight. You can't just waste your time trying to pre- be presentable for the world when you can just be good for you. I'm not knocking you for that. What I'm knocking you for, <laughs> what I'm knocking you for is how the hell you came in. Like you <laughs> are ass naked in this woman's house with her baby in the other room. And you just put a tiptoe your ass out of the bitch. <laughs> Basically, that's what? how that went. What? No, you, no, no. Just, that's what I'm knocking you for. Is having some, a little bit of decency, don't just. Okay, we can keep going. We don't have to stop right there. Um, okay, let's hit the chorus real quick. Uh, see you out there thugging in your yesterday's new money, same clothes on from yesterday. You was all man. I see you all up in the mix. Show up. Plus, I fucked on that. Oh, God. This guy's aggressive. That was dancing with before I left the. The what? Yeah, what is that? Wait, what? Got up. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm so sorry. Got up and that pussy went wider than a Mardi Gras. What does that even mean? That's just let me make sure you're my back side. So you fucked that little thing that you saw that I saw you with for sure. I put that on the squad out here. What the shit? He hit. He put it on the I know what it means. I know what it means. I'm not stupid. Um, I know you're not. Jesus Christ. Okay, so before I read any more of this repulsive ass song, do you want to go into (laughs) what the story behind it is? Because the first one, I'm not going to say the first one was easy to analyze. (laughs) I'm not going to say the first one was easy to analyze because going into it, I thought one thing, but by the end, I realized it was something completely different. This just sounds like a guy who's just doing shit. So if you want to just elaborate, maybe, on what I'm getting myself into before I keep reading any more. Well, from where we we are, we're going to say... We're in the second verse. We're in the second verse right now. Right. So... He left this party, yes. you know, it was it was wild. We're going to say it's a house party. It's a mm-hmm. sort where, you know, a bunch of people in the neighborhood, we all know each other. We cool, Man, really tight neighborhood. Um, probably a couple gang affiliations, you know, but um, it's one of those things we all together. You, like everybody knows everybody. So you know the history behind people in your neighborhood. Like, like you know everybody in your neighborhood per se. That's the, small we, town mentality. Uh, you know everybody, everybody knows you and no one's business is really their business. It's kind of right. So know. basically that's how this is. You know, okay. he goes to this party and the dude basically hits him up uh like after he does his little bird bath and get ready because he's one of those men who is technically the plug, so okay. he's go, he he has stuff to do. He has to get to his squad. He got to get to his gang. Uh, so right now he's orchestrating a deal. All right. Like, but he's sitting there like, okay, I just got the same clothes on from yesterday because I got to get this deal taken care of before I actually hit the streets. Right. So he, that's the reason why him and his homie are having the conversation right now. Okay. He's like, hey. So I saw you at the, the party last night. You were turnt, bro. Like, I, I remember seeing you dancing yeah. on old girl. Yeah. And basically his conversation is basically, hey, man, you know, I, yeah, I slept with the girl. She was cool. You know, we did our thing, you know. And they're okay. The squad. They're, they're totally fine with. Yeah, but but that 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 black males for you, we, we like, yeah, man, I, I fucked that girl, man. You know, I put that on everything. Okay, I so can I, I'm going to pause you. Can I ask a question? Because okay. If a nigga has sex with like three or four girls and they're all friends with each other, those girls aren't going to be okay with that. But if they a not. girl has sex with three or four dudes that are all cool with each other, they don't seem to care. No. Why? No. Only because like most of the time, you know, relationships and stuff, you know, die down, you know, and most of the time it's just, if, if it's all in your hood, you know, like shit, you know, so-and-so and so-and-so, they've been together for a couple years, but you know, they, they fell out. And you know, you don't really travel that much outside your neighborhood, especially when you're gang affiliated. Because so every section has a squad. Neutral, neutral neighborhoods. If something like that were to be okay, so you can't. And that's what I mean. With, like, so they're all friends. Yeah, they basically the it's the it's the crew. You know, we all know each other. And that's okay. That's okay. Like even Some if they people didn't have fall out, even if it was just like a one night stand, and you go to your friend. Yeah, yeah. And like you, know, you're not trying to be with the girl. You know, you trying to slide in. You saw her. Your best friend, you know, he took the girl that you wanted. You might as well just. It's it's guy mentality as a man. You might as well just run a train or something like this. Basically, you want to be respectful as as much as possible to at least a woman. But okay, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. And I'm not trying to dive too deep into this. This is not what we're going to talk about. But (laughs) you want to be respectful. You're going okay. 
But let's you're say, not trying to. Let's say it's not, four dudes. To her. Let's say it's four dudes. Dude number one goes to the girl. They talk for a little bit, maybe a day or two. He eventually smashes, goes back and tells the other three dudes what he just did. He's degrading her when he's telling them what he just did. So now he's opened the door and another one of the four dudes, dude number two goes and does the exact same thing. And she being a woman is like, fuck it. Okay, you know, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with women who want to be, you know, sexually active and explore their sex. There isn't anything wrong with that. Everybody has a whole phase. That's what it's called. There's nothing to be ashamed of. It happens. But usually you don't fuck with the niggas who hang out together because that's all they're going to be talking about is you when they get together. Eventually, all four of those dudes are going to smash that one girl, and when they get together, they're going to be talking about her in the most vile and degrading ways possible, saying everything that they did, everything they didn't do, and shit like that, because that's what niggas talk about. Mm -hmm. So how is that not degrading? Because they're still talking about, just because they didn't say it to her face, it doesn't mean it's not what they think. They still think this way about but her. But this is different though. It's like at least giving everybody a fair share type of thing. What? Okay. okay. It's like it's like if you went to the bar and- I don't want to go to the bar. I'm just saying, saying if you went to the bar and you got a guy, you shoot him down, you, uh, and then another guy comes and you shoot him down, and then you give this, uh, this last guy opportunity. You don't know that all four of these guys are homies and they sitting there like, bet I can get her, bet I can get her. And they all shooting a shot at different times because they want to give you at least enough time to get you at least a little bit more drunk of a sort. Or you didn't you didn't say, all right, I'm going to break down these walls real quick. I'm, I'm cool enough to give somebody an opportunity. This is why I don't go to the bars by myself. But that's but that's the mentality it is. If if y'all are from the small town or whatever, or small section or clique or whatever, then it's one of those things where all right, so and so uh, made uh, shot his shot. He got shot down, but she's still bad. I don't give a fuck. I'ma shoot my shot. I if I get turned down and then my homie hit, then it is I what it is. Because most niggas who get turned down by a female will be quick to say, oh, fuck you, ugly, anyway, you ugly. Like, they'll be quick to do something like that versus saying, oh, well, she's still mad and said, I'm gonna just try again later. Like, unless you're crazy or just like respectful, you're not gonna say, that's not gonna be the first thing that you say to a woman who rejects you, usually. True. Um. And that's just based off of things that I've seen, things that I've heard from women. When they reject men, that's usually how they'll react. And if they don't say it to your face, I guarantee you they will go back and tell their friends, oh, well, she she thinks she's too good or something. And they like, she's too gay, bro. Yeah, so, and that's true. But it's always that one in the squad that's gonna hit you with the man. You just didn't know what you was doing, bro. Let me let me show you how to do it. Yeah, and it's but it's you. It's just one, and unless you know they say birds of a feather, but um, most group of men who go out to look for women like that, they're only looking for a woman that they can smash real quick and then dip off on. You're rarely gonna find men at a bar or a nightclub situation looking for something long-term and meaningful. That's right. Rare. That's and that's very, exactly very how rare. that is at, the, at that club or that, that house party. Like they all know each other and they, they probably never, they didn't all probably shoot they shot at the same time. They probably did it over a course of a year. Like, oh, oh girl, she decided she wanted to be with so-and-so, but now she's single, I'ma shoot my shot. Okay, she she fucks with me for like a month or so. I'm I'm done with her because you know she crazy. And then so and so down the street, like man, shit, I'm gonna go is try to hit. How, is this how niggas really think? This is That's how, this not is how, not all, but there this is there how are confuse niggas with gentlemen. Gentlemen right. don't think like this, but do niggas think like this? Because. Yeah, right. 
Niggas do. And, and for the record, my definition of the difference between a gentleman and a nigga, a nigga is, first of all, a nigga can be any race. I don't want nobody hitting me with the racism bullshit. You can be black, white, Asian, Hispanic, mixed breed, whatever the fuck. If you are an ignorant ass man who, you know, maybe be delinquent to your children or disrespectful to your parents or just degrading to whoever women or you're just, you refuse to accept anything new or, you know, uh, receive new information. You're stuck and content with your old ways and the old way of thinking. And you don't want to, you know, knowledge yourself and, you know, learn new things and try new things and be adventurous and, and you know, experimental as far as how you think and how you take in information. You're a nigga. And that can be anybody. A yeah, gentleman, on the other hand, is really the polar opposite. You're respectful to women, especially your parents, especially your mother, your sisters. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you are you take care of yourself, you're mature. It doesn't have to be confused with being childish or silly because you can be childish and or silly and still be mature. You're right. You handle your priorities, you take care of your children. You make sure that your family is straight and together. You may have nigga moments where somebody might piss you off and you just snap and go crazy and be mad. That's normal, that happens. But at the mm -hmm. end of the day, you have a logic, a subconscious that will reason with you and say, hey, maybe you shouldn't do that because this might happen. Right. So there's a huge difference between being a gentleman and being a nigga. So if all niggas think like this, yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to be involved. <laughs> And that's, that's a 100% true because, because you're, you're a lady and you, you're not just some hoe that's just out here just thinking with they pussy. Yeah. You know, because that, because it happens, you know, just like y'all say all the time, some niggas think what they did, which yeah. is true. So it, it's it's one of those things, it's two sides of one coin. Yeah. And um, we typically find those. It's like being a bitch. And being a lady, because bitches don't give a fuck about nobody. They're, they're right. mean, they're stuck up, you know, they, they aggressive as hell. They always want to fight and they don't usually take care of their families or their children and they damn sure don't care of themselves. They're extremely materialistic with a high maintenance mentality. But in actuality, you're living in poverty, buying $700, $800 lace fronts and your mm -hmm. children look like they just crawled out of the sewage drain, you know, smelling like garbage and eating ramen noodles. Right, that, menta that mentality, you can go out there and you know, you go into these VIP sections, but you coming home and sleeping on air mattress. Exactly, exactly. Eating and ramen noodles. And it be like struggling, but coming up, you know your bills are paid, your refrigerator's full of food, you have plenty of gas in your car, and you have insurance. And you know, your kids taken care of. That's one thing, but it's another thing to be literally at the bottom. Mm -hmm. With the mentality that you should be on top, but you're not doing anything to get you there. Versus a lady who takes care of her family, takes care of herself. You know, she puts herself on a high pedestal because she knows she'll get there and she's working towards getting there. She's not just saying it because somebody else told her she should say it. She's saying it because she knows her self-worth and she knows where she belongs in society and she's making the moves and changes to get there. And she only associates with people with that same mentality. Right. So yeah, it's two sides of the same coin for sure. And there are a lot of bitches who think just like niggas do. They just want to fuck the next nigga because he look good, he got a nice car, he got money. Right. And you say that you fucked him like. And and that, that's where we are in this, uh, this uh, song <laughs> where you got this nigga mentality you got this girl you know she she probably you know a bitch you know just doing just doing some hoish things at this party not really knowing who she giving a body to just you know just trying to sleep with the guy because he seemed cool yeah so you know we at this party and basically he telling his homeboy just right next to him yeah, man, I put that on the squad. I, mean, I hit that girl, and we 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 jokingly we laugh at that, but that's actual conversation. Like we, you know, we always sit there and we're like, man, 
Man, you ain't hit her. Man, yeah. you, ain't, you, ain't, you ain't fuck on that girl, it's, man. I'm it's a cliche, but I mean, I feel like conversations like that really do happen to some degree. Like, yeah, you know, because so, some men won't not... believe that you even got a chance with so and so, but you right. swearing up and down that you did, and they just don't believe you. That's just a typical conversation. That's, that's just like a stereotype that big dudes don't get pretty girls, and then you get, he's like, bro, I, I did smash. Yeah. It ain't no way. You she way out of your lead. Or maybe it's the mentality of if she ain't fucking with me, I know she ain't finna fuck with you. And you right. telling me that she fuck with you, but she ain't fucking with right. me. So it's that in denial. There's no way you mm-hmm. could have got her because I'm better than you and she didn't want me. So why would she want you? It it's right. So it's jealousy that's, that's that saying that you're jealous. You. But uh, instead of him wanting her, he just knows information about her. So if we go along into the rest of the story, mm-hmm. um, it's more like, so I'm, are you sure you slept with old girls? He's like, yeah, I did, man. I, I put her on the squad, you know, I did, I did. He's like, well, I know she had a, a couple uh, babies by the big pro, with hence the babies that were crying in the, the yep. next room over. Yep, yep, yep. But he didn't know nothing about that. And he was like, oh, that's crazy. I wish he, uh, I hope he get all that sorted out, you know, she, cause she a hoe. Yeah. And when you go along into the rest of the story, you understand how she is because she sleep around more uh, often. And the guy been telling this on me, bro, you you shouldn't mess with her. She, she stay out there doing whole shit. And he's like, man, that's my baby. That's my, you know, we got that guy, that guy who doesn't know when he getting played. Right. And I so usually feel just, sorry for that guy because he really do be like catching feelings for this right. like dirty ass female and she's just a dirty she doesn't care. You know what I mean? She she usually doesn't care because if she did she wouldn't be sleeping around with all these other dudes, but I mean they tried to tell you nothing to <laughs> Right, right, right. So you go further into the story, you know, he goes, he plays two K with the guy, you know, I put two hundred on there. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just well, love how funny it was. She opened the door as soon as you turned, she closed. <laughs> but <laughs> I digress. I but digress. so, <laughs> um, so you know, he's telling about it, uh, about uh, the whole situation, and then you know they're like, "Oh man, while we sitting here, wait, can we do something?" You know, I'm I'm still kind of waking up. I, I'm still, you know, I I ain't smoked all day. Like, basically just giving out, like, information that the reader should know it, mm-hmm. or the person listening should know the, the environment. Like, yeah. he, he in this little little trap house, you know, he got the boys, like, who who want to play the game? Yeah. I'll put 200 or uh, how much you say? I'm sure you said, like, I think it was 200 or something. He put some money on the game. He's like, I got the Lakers, uh, and they play. You know, they don't say who wins or lose, but it just, you know, that mentality, like, hey, right, man, I'm just here. I'm, I'm I'm, waiting for this guy. Let's do something. I'm playing the game. See if that time, like, uh, at least get something done while we're playing the game. So um, I got a lyric here that kind of caught my attention. It like it's right after um, uh, uh, they, the whole playing the game situation. He says, um... What are you saying, nigga, that my nigga is waiting? Plus, I ain't smoke no weed yet, so I'm getting impatient. Well, I can dip and come back. Nah, nah, no. I ain't trying to cancel it. Keep calling, big bro. That nigga ain't answering. Wait, big bro? Yeah, the same nigga that we talking about. He had a dumb look on his face when he was walking out. There was a nigga in your motherfucking house. There was a nigga leaving your house. I just seen a nigga pull off your bitch. Y'all fucking babies in here. You don't tell me that he, that... You don't tell me that here tonight, I'm gonna bust a move, why? Hungry as fuck, I'm gonna give me some food. Thinking in my head, he gonna come back with something to prove. I just paused you, he just checking your back. Man, he on his way, I ain't trying to really, I ain't really trying to pull this shit off another day. I know the rules, all money ain't good money, but this money right here, so good for me. You know, I pray these niggas like mine, fuck I gotta make a move, the clock is winding. So, what it sounds like, to me, is that they're at the trap house, like you said, 
waiting for somebody to either bring some money or bring some drugs, do some kind of transaction. And while they're waiting, they're talking about the girl that he was just with. And mm-hmm. the dude that they're waiting on is the baby mother of the dude that they're waiting on. She's the, the baby mama, this baby mama. Mm-hmm. So now when he gets there, he's going to know that the dude was just at his house yep. talking with his girl and he's gonna feel some type of way about that. So he might come and try to start some problems, but instead of just, you know, taking the L and killing the whole transaction, he's gonna let it go through because he still needs the money for it. Like, yeah, I may have did this, but I still need to get paid. So do you wanna work together or not? Like. That's what's going on in his head is all right so for me as as i've heard this song um for for me it's the perspective of all right i ain't know what i'm coming into this place not knowing my surroundings like i i i know some people in this clique but i don't know everybody and so i i'm like man all right, how long am I gonna wait, man? I've been, I, we played a game, 2K. We, we, you know, I've been sitting here waiting all morning. I still ain't smoke weed. I still got my boys waiting on me because they I'm supposed to be. Hell. You're right. Like I just got up right after. I just, I, I, I fucked. I'm still drunk, but I'm, I, I'm, I'm not high. So you know, I'm, I probably function better high. Yeah. And you know, I've been waiting all day for this. So I feel well. I, to me, I feel like it's cutting into me making my money. Right. And so, but he's like, all right, we waiting on big bro. Oh, the, the same dude that we were just talking about? Damn. And he's not trying to speak up and be like, oh, I, I ain't know him and the, I ain't no dude at all. Yeah. And you know, if I'm waiting for him, y'all like, as a partner of mine, you should know, bro. Hey, dip out. I, I got you on this one. This yeah. will be the L I take you on. No, dude, dude's like, this is the only way we're gonna make this transaction if you here. Right. Because we know you got money. Like, like typically you're the person, the money man in this situation, in right. this transaction. Like I'm just the the middleman, the 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 plug middleman the third yeah. party in this situation i'm just, I'm just bringing y'all two together in the room like that's how right y'all right. Do I'm, I'm the one with the connection right this is my homie not not your homie this is my my homie he got he he got the drugs that you need and you got the money that he needs so y'all both need me to get what y'all want and right so he's like i'm not trying to i'm not <laughs> trying to have y'all uh do this another day because i got stuff to do on my own because i'm right. the middleman and he, as problem, he doesn't know what's going on. He's right. like, man, I hope this dude had the same mind state as me. You know, if it was my girl, I probably would be messed up about it. But still, it's, I'd rather take the money than the problem. No hard feelings. <laughs> no, like, like, no hard That's feelings. That's personal. I didn't know. She didn't let me know. Right. If if I would have known, then I, it would have been like, oh. That, and at that point, wrong. you would say that the responsibility would fall on the woman. But again, because she's a bitch, she doesn't care mm-hmm. about his feelings and what he's going through and, and how he feels about what she did. So, yeah, you she could have said, oh, well, you know, really, I'm still fucking around with so-and-so. He might not know who so-and-so is. But he would know, probably think twice. You know what I mean? Right. Um, but because she didn't, and because she doesn't care, he really can't get mad at the other dude, especially if he didn't know. And it's one thing to know that somebody you're fucking with is in a relationship, whether it be serious or platonic. But it's another thing to get mad at that person when you really should be getting mad at your significant other because they were because the Because they know. Who, y'all, y'all are together. Exactly. Y'all have this, y'all supposed to have this connection, this communication. So if you feel uncomfortable to being in a relationship, then you should break it off to begin with. But no, I'm going to go outside my reach and I'm going to go and I'm going to go mess with so-and-so because at this point I'm fed up with you. I'm going to just, you know, do my thing regardless if it's collateral damage or not. Right. I mean, but, 
And but, but that, oh gosh, I'm stuttering like this. <laughs> <laughs> I was stuttering. I thought and I couldn't get the words out. But, but yeah, most so, people don't you know, think that way. They just want to get mad at whoever their significant other cheated on them with and take it out on them. When in reality, you need to talk to your significant other because that other person, unless they knew about you, they don't have anything to do with it. Right. They have no idea. But all right, I got, let's move on to the, are you done with the song or did you want to keep going? No, well, at the end, uh, you basically find out that the dude was a little pissed. And um, instead of, you know, just sliding and coming to figure out what's going on with the, uh, with this transaction, he goes and he kills the baby mama. Oh, okay. I didn't read that in the song. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so, I'm like, I probably didn't put two and two so, so problem basically, you know, he was like, "Hey man, I'm gonna just go ahead and dip." After uh, after he sat there and waited a little bit longer, he was like, "All right, well, this is probably not the, the move that I need to uh, make. Plus, I ain't even got all the, the bread with me, so I'm a I'm a slide. Right. I'm gonna take a shower. I'm gonna eat. I'm gonna hit you up in almost an hour. He's like 50 minutes or something, <laughs> some odd number, which is odd to say. Oh, I'm gonna hit you up in 50 minutes." Yeah, that's what he said. <laughs> so getting back to what we had said, as far as um, confronting your significant other, I wouldn't recommend killing them, but right. uh, definitely a confrontation of some kind to resolve the problem peacefully, because nobody needs to right. die, you know what I mean? Um, but I mean, if you're dealing with crazy people, I mean, hey, I'm not, this is fictional. It's all fiction. It's all, it's not yeah. this a true story. Um, so, uh, song yeah, number three. So he ends up killing them. Problem hits, uh, he's like, yeah, I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit you up in an hour. He he goes and he calls, the, uh, he calls, leaves her a message or something and she doesn't respond. He was like, well, uh, that shit ain't got nothing to do with me. And then it shows on her, I think it's Instagram. It says RIP. Baby daddy, baby daddy shot me. And then he's like in front of my kids, my fucking kids. Oh, that's what the, okay. So I did read that and I was like, I don't know what that means. But. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't so get that. So like, that was him talking to her. Yeah. You know, confronting her about the issue. Like you really mm -hmm. finna do this and then what did he do? He shoots her and strangles her. Yeah, he, he shoots her a couple times. You know, so, having says, sex oh, of, so having sex with another man in front of your children is bad, but killing your mom <laughs> is not that bad. Is that what you I'm know. getting? Like, so you can kill, you can shoot mommy in the face, and that's not gonna hurt me as much as but you, you know when hurt. you're in the moment and you're supposed to be a gangster anyway. So you know your first response is to. And that discipline, I guess you would say, okay. and the the discipline he goes towards is execution, which is not the best and right idea. When you know, first of all, you you the the guy with the drugs, anyway. So you you looking at uh, second degree murder on top of uh, <laughs> having uh, possession of drugs, right? And then you did all this in front of children, which reckless endangerment and, and some more stuff. So you you get you plan on going to jail for a long um, the rest of your life. I'm not going to say a long time. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's life in prison. Right? Yeah, uh, probably right. uh, twice of life. But you know, it is what it is. Probably 100 plus, 150 plus years. It is what it is. Right. Oh, okay. so we got. But yeah, that, that's how that 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 concluded. But the reason why I compared it to, you know, um, Slick Rick, it was one of those things, like, they both had traumatic endings. Yeah. You know, for sure. And so they they were similar story. into that regard, you know? Well, the story wasn't the same because the story no, in no. Slick Rick's uh, children's stories was like, this guy is just like a delinquent, a rebel. He robbing and stealing and and doing this and doing that and he enjoys he gets off on it. it's a thrill to him you right know, he gets his friend involved and he's like okay yeah, this is cool and then one day it goes too far and now he's on the run and now instead of it being like an adrenaline rush and exciting it's more like an anxiety attack and it's panic because right. now your life is at stake and you just don't know what to do or where to go or how to go about it and you're 
you immediately just, you know, fight or flight starts to kick in. So mm-hmm. then he sacrifices himself and that's that, that's how it works out. So, uh, but well, you know, if you before. think it, you take it into that regard, his fight or flight was to, to flee. I need, I need a, I need a- That's the flight be- part. Like, <laughs> that's, that's, that's the, the flight. flight. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna get out of that situation. But, you know, it's not my business. I'm a dip. I mean, he tried you know, to fight for all intents and purposes. He did put up somewhat of a fight, but right. it didn't work out too well. So now he did go. Um, right. Let's get him to talk on the field I, before I, I get was, I was going, I was going to go for it, but now I'm I'm out of here. <laughs> I got I got other things to do. And basically, right. he avoided that whole situation by leaving. Because honestly, I'm sure uh, immediately after that happened, the dude got pulled over for whatever and you know, he probably went to jail, so that transaction didn't follow through anyway. Yeah, more more likely than not, that's how it. So that's we're, we're looking, that's we're looking how to I feel about that. Not trying to personify this and make it real life. It's all fictional stories. I hope right. So don't <laughs> go out there and but, kill the baby um, the mama <laughs> because she slept with some dude that she was supposed to be selling some more drugs. To. But anyway, yeah, okay, let's get into song number three. Song number three is we're Billy by uh, yes. Skits Kravitz. 